What's going on guys? P. Will back here for another video. That's right, it's been a long time since I've made a YouTube video, a sit down formal video. Not expecting anybody to be back and, and watch this video, but I, uh, I do wanna get back into the YouTube grind. I will explain, you know, in coming videos what all's going on, where I am in life. Uh, I've been out of the army for one year now, and that kind of brings me to the point of this video, kind of what I wanna talk about. I'm gonna be kind of doing some reflection videos over the next few videos, just kind of talking about the army and the military in general and where I've been, what it did for me, and you know, just kind of reflecting and we'll, we'll delve into all that. We'll, be, we'll bring back the, uh, the live videos, but today I wanted to talk about why everyone should join the military. And I'm more specifically talking about the foundation it gives you in life. Now I understand I'm not talking about literally everyone. I know some people will not be able to join the military for whatever reason, health issues, stuff like that. Some people just won't want any part of the military. I'm not here to talk about politics or your thoughts on the military. I'm just talking about the military as a path in life, a viable path in life to set a great foundation for your life and why I believe it's one of the best things if you're able-bodied and you're open-minded to set you up for a great foundation in life. And I've got a few points on my uh, notepad here on my computer that I'm gonna go down and talk about. And I'm really just gonna be free flowing. And I wanted to do this because if I would have made, I couldn't have made this video one year ago because it's just a little over one year ago today, January 3rd, 2022, I got out of the United States Army and I wouldn't have had the perspective. Now I'm only 23 years old at the time of making this video. I wouldn't have the perspective then that I have now and an appreciation for the Army. And I will probably have a greater appreciation five years from now than I do right now, but I feel like I'm back into a point where I can talk about my military experience because there was a while there that um, I wanted no part of the military. And I guess, you know, a lot of veterans can I can think about that. And if you're in the army right now, you can let me know in the comments. I'm sure you're the exact same way. You want to know part of the military. You didn't want to talk about it. You didn't want to do anything regarding it. You didn't want it to be, you know, your personality. You didn't want it to do, to, to be a part of anything of your life. You wanted to get out, never look back, leave base, flick a bird as you're leaving base. And, you know, I went through that period of time in my life and I still have those moments in my, in my thought process, but I'm, you know, I'm gonna talk about the positives, I'm gonna talk about the negatives, but this video is for the positives of the military and why I think it's a great foundation and why if you're able-bodied, everyone should join the foundation. So the first point I wanna talk about is I've written down financial independence. Now I'm not talking about the financial independence in terms of, oh, you'll never have to work again in your life or uh, when you get do your four years in the army, you'll never have to work or you'll be set, set, you'll be rich. That's not what I'm talking about when I say financial independence. I mean financial independence from your parents. If you're a kid coming out of high school and joining the army, I'm talking about uh, financial independence from crappy, you know, entry level jobs uh, that go nowhere. Maybe it, you know, I'm not talking down on anybody. Everybody has to start somewhere, right? But I'm talking about exiting the rat race of, you know, those entry level, low level jobs that you just can't seem to get away from. That's what I'm talking about, financial independence. You become financially independent from your parents, from anybody else other than yourself through the military, if that makes any sense at all. Um, why that is, you get three to six years of relatively decent pay. Now, I know some people are gonna be in the comments, uh, some people in the army right now, former soldiers, service members. Um, you're gonna say, oh, we don't get paid anything. Well, you don't get paid great, but I would argue you get paid way better than any other entry level job out there. I don't know any other entry level job that starts you out making 30K a year ish, depending on if you're married, depending on what rank you come in at, you know, varying. But I don't know any entry level job that starts you out that much, plus factoring in what we're about to talk about. You have, you start out, even if you come in as an E1 private, yeah, you're not going to make that great of pay but you have un, you know, very viable and very abundant opportunities for promotion within the Army. Your first four, it might be even more than that, your first four to six years in the Army, you, get, you have two opportunities per roughly year to get promoted. You get promoted based off of time in the Army, time in service, and you get promoted based off your time in grade at a certain rank. So when you come in, I think, I'm, I'm just remembering back to when you know I've made these videos and all the, but it's gonna be roughly in the ballpark. If you come in as an E1, I it's within six months or eight months, you're 
already uh, have the time and service time and grade to be eligible for a promotion to E2. It might be a year, but let's just, let's just call it a year. Even if it's a year, I don't know many mid-level jobs that are going to guarantee you a promotion after one year. After one year at E1, you come in, or after, yeah, one year at E1, E2. After one year to 18 months at E2, you're eligible for E3. Same rough time period from E3 to E4. And when you go to E5, yes, there's an extra factor, but it's still time and service, time and grade. Now all you've got to do is you've got to go to a board and you've got to go to a BLC, which I believe if you're living and breathing, you can pass BLC and pass a board if you have any type of work ethic about yourself. Um, just, you know, I did... I should have said this at the beginning of the video. Most of you that you know watch my channel know this, but I did four years in the United States Army, a little over four years. Um, I got out as an E5. I was a 35 Fox intelligence analyst. I came in as an E1, started from the bottom. Now we're here, right? I uh, E1 to E5. I was an E5 for almost a year, maybe over a year when I got out. Um, so you know, I was living a pretty good life there at the end as an E5, not, not lavish, but I was doing just fine for myself as an E5 with four years time in service. I was making good money for nobody, somebody with no college degree or any skills prior to coming into the army. And that's not factoring in. I had no bills. You have no bills in the army except for what you bills you want to have. Uh, if you, you know, your cell phone, if you have a car payment, we'll make financial videos. I'm highly against cars, car payments. Um, but you don't, you you know, maybe a car payment, maybe a phone payment, maybe, and then any other outstanding debt, maybe credit card debt you have, but it's all personal payments. The military, the army covers your food, covers your housing, covers your tuition, covers your medical, covers your dental. All of those things, those big expenses that people struggle with sometimes in life, all of those are gone in the army it's all covered now we can get into the argument and i'm going to talk about it on my channel the quality of the food the quality of the housing the reliability of the tuition assistance um, the quality of the medical the quality of the dental we can have those discussions and arguments but something's better than nothing and i would argue in some cases it's really great and you don't have to pay for it at all because of that, because of the decent pay and the no bills or anything like that, you have a great opportunity to fast track your retirement slash wealth building. Now, you're never going to be this multi-billionaire, multi-millionaire. Well, you could be a multi-millionaire through a career in the Army, but it lays a great foundation in your life. And I've got a video on my channel. If you go back somewhere in a vlog, I talk about this. Your TSP is a great retirement plan. If you just throw a lot of money in there, it's you know the military equivalent of a 401k. If you just throw your money in there, it will compound. As a person that did a normal enlistment, E1 through E5 at four years in the Army, I was able to shovel away you know a lot of money relative to my peers that were in college into my retirement and get ahead of that compound interest and get the, my money working for me. I'll give you roundabout numbers because it's not about me, it's about you. But let's just say, you know, it's not unfeasible if you live disciplined on a budget, don't blow your money every weekend uh, and start as soon as you get out of basic training. It's not unfeasible for an enlisted person to do one contract and come out of the military with $30,000 in their TSP plus any money that you can squeeze away into a Roth IRA. I tried to max that every pay period is every month as well and get at least 20% into my TSP while I was in the military. And now I'm still doing that as I'm out and I've laid a great foundation of my wealth building. I got a four year head start on anybody that is in college that you know doesn't have that time. And it yeah, it might not matter right now, oh, only $30,000, but go do some math and look at the compound interest of that much money over 40 years with that four year increment. You know, a million dollars with an extra four years to grow is a lot more money than a million dollars. Doesn't have the same amount of time to grow. That doesn't have any time to grow. You know, 10% on a million dollars for four years, that's, you know, half a million, almost half a million dollars right there just from compound interest. But I'm getting sidetracked in the video. It's not exactly about financial independence. Um, but And then you also, if you want to stay in the Army, you love it. You have the opportunity to retire at 20 years. If you come in at 18, that's 38. If you go and be an officer, that's roughly 42-ish. Young, really young to start a new career. To If you invest heavily, financial independence, retire early, fire. If you're a fire guy, you can save enough, if you're smart about it, to never have to work again after the military. You'll have some you know, costs probably, but you'll have healthcare when you retire and stuff like that. So it's a great way to set your life 
um, for you know set your life up for a life of financial independence just for either four years in the army military uh, I was in the army but I'm um, talking military four years in the military or uh, if you retire from the military point number two these are in no particular order um, they're just things that came to my head you get paid to learn a skill and or try things out I came into the military with no experience doing anything I played football in high school I had literally zero work experience um, and now I am a trained and have the credentials as an intelligence analyst. And then if I wanted to, we'll talk about my plans later. If I wanted to, I could pair that with a four-year degree and have a very competitive resume in the civilian market, especially if you get any type of VA disability, get disability preference, um, which we'll talk about here later on in the video. But just for being a veteran, being a trained intelligence analyst or whatever your job is, plus if you pair it with a four-year degree, you have a very competitive resume at 23, 24, 25 years old. That takes people a lot longer if they just do the traditional college route and then have to start with an entry-level job. Um, we can argue about the merits of different things, but I mean, the, the fact is it is a great resume booster and you build fantastic soft skills. You build great leadership skills. You build, you, you learn um, some discipline. You learn how to set your life in order every morning, which I think is really important. Make your bed, clean your room, stuff like that. Um, you build camaraderie. You get experiences at a young age that kids your age, and you know, unless they go across the country to college, yeah, they'll have a, an experience, right? But it'll be completely different than what you had. Just take me for instance. I don't know, I don't know many, tw I got out at 22. Well, let's call it a year before I get out because that's really when I started you know, backing off, right? I don't know many 21 year olds that got to live in Europe for a year that got to go to all these different cool places and meet all these different cool people while getting paid, while working, while building discipline and skills, relevant work experience all on the government's dime. I never would have moved to Kansas and become, you know, and not infatuated, but made really good friends at Kansas State University where I never would have lived in Manhattan, Kansas, but I did because of the Army. I never would have lived in Arizona, but I did because of the Army. And I got to see all these different cultures and all these different people and all of these different ways of life while getting paid. And it's really changed my perspective on life. Now, you will get aspects of that in college. That's obviously a large part of why people go to college, right? But I just feel like it's a different mindset that is developed, and I've got a video on my channel called The Military Mindset, go check that out, it'll explain a little bit more in depth. The mindset that I have is all because of the Army in a lot of ways. You know, I would be a similar version of myself if I'd gone to college, um, and sometimes I think about that route, like who would I have been, but it is a great way to build your resume, learn some soft skills, learn things to put on your resume that will pay off long term that you just simply wouldn't get by going to college or going straight into the workforce. Um, we can argue that, but that's really how I feel about the matter. Moving into point number three, self-respect. What I mean by that, I wrote under there, it's hard at times, but it puts the rest of your life into perspective. If I just turned 18, went to college, got a job, you know, life would have been, you know, it probably would have been good, right? It probably would have been all right. I would have made something of myself because I'm ambitious and I'm sure you are too. But the military and the army specifically, but I'm every all branches of the military, all jobs, they suck in different ways a lot and very hard at times. And when you get past that stage in life, it's great. I would rather be doing that when I'm 19, 20 years old than when I'm 30, 31 years old, right? So I put in that time, and you can too, put in that time while you're young to go through crappy times, hard times, things that really test your mental fortitude and test your soul and test your uh, endurance of life um, and stuff like that. It puts that in perspective. Now I can you know, enjoy, I really enjoy just being warm in my bed. I really enjoy getting to sleep in on days that I don't, you know, get up. I really enjoy just having the opportunity to go to the gym and not have to worry about, oh, I got to get back for this bub meeting <laughs> and stuff like that. Just little things here and there. I enjoy, you know, if I get a normal job, I enjoy the nine to five aspect a lot more if that's the route I choose because I don't have to wake up at five o'clock to get to work. I can wake up at seven, seven thirty, ease my way around. I don't have, I feel like a, a human being. I feel like a man now and I appreciate having my own space. All of this is because of the army. All of the, all of the things I have is because of the army and I enjoy it because, you know, of the crappy times, you know, I've got a nice apartment now. And I remember just two years ago, 
I was in a barracks with a roommate and I had my NCOs come or LTs coming in and checking my room and checking up here. Oh, is that dust right there? And now I don't have to worry about that. Now I get to live in a clean space that I, to my standards that I keep clean, but I don't have to worry about those things. I get to enjoy spending time with my family because I know how precious life is and I know how often you might not get to see them. I, I went four years to only see my parents once or twice a year, my family. Um, I, I enjoy my friendships with my friends that I have here because I went a long time without seeing them, right? Just things like that. I could go on and on. I don't want this video to be an hour and a half long. I'm going to just rant at times on my channel now, but I, you know, it gives you some self-respect that I went out there and did that on my own. I went through those hard times. I can do anything. I can grind for this job now. I can do this. I can do that all because of the military. Point number, what is this for now? If it doesn't work out, you can just start over. Literally, you can do your four years in the Army, and if you hate it, you can just start over. How? Well, while you're in, the Army pays for your tuition at any school you want to go to up to $4,500 per semester. That was what it was while I'm in it. It might have changed, but I was going to school. I got my associate's degree while I was in in four years, and I didn't like it, so what did I do? I got out, and I'm starting over. Am I using anything you know, physically that I gained from the Army? No, I'm not going to go be an intelligence analyst. I'm not going to go be a cop or anything you know some things that people do when they get out of the military i'm not doing anything government related i'm so thankful i had the opportunity to do those things and get my for my under um associate's degree off of tuition assistance while i'm in now i get out and can start over how by using the gi bill you can literally go to school for free and get paid to go the gi bill right now is paying my full tuition uh to get my undergrad degree so two years on top of my associate's degree that I've already had, I get paid the tuition, I get paid books, I get paid housing, BAH, that pays for you know my apartment and stuff like that. That would not have been possible if I just went to college, right? Now, I mean, technically, yeah, but I would still be paying for it. I could have taken out student loans and got the same degree I'm getting now. But if any of you, I'm very anti-student loans. We'll talk about that on the channel. I'm very anti all of that. And I believe wholeheartedly that I am so far ahead, even if the numbers aren't you know, drastically ahead of my peer group. Most of the people that I is my, are my age, 23, and people that are your age, uh, you know, they're going to have or have large amounts of student loans, even if that's $10,000, start right now and save up $10,000 cash and tell me how long that takes you. That's $10,000 that I have that people my age won't have because they are strapped with that student loan. And it gives you the freedom to kind of figure out what you want to do in life. I went in and did my time in the army and I didn't love it. I knew, I thought when I was 18 that I wanted to be an intelligence analyst and work in the government and work in the intelligence community. And then as I grew and matured and had experiences in the army, I wanted no part of that. But I wouldn't have known that unless I had joined the army, right? And had those experiences. I would have went to college, got that degree in that field, started working and hated it. It would have been a waste of $30,000 or however much tuition for that is at whatever school. It would have been a waste or I would have continued down that path, been miserable, right? And hated life when I could have just hated life in the army for four years, get out and do something completely different that I learned I was passionate about while I was in the army. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, and then point number five, I think that's five, it's access to the VA for life slash veterans preference for certain things. Once again, we can have a debate on the quality of the VA, but I think they're making drastic improvements over time. Just having the veteran preference tag on your resume for jobs for certain things is a huge boost. And you also always obviously have the veterans discounts at Home Depot, at Lowe's, things like that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, get the occasional thank you for your service. Got the little veteran tag on my driver's license. Like that's cool and you earn that. That's not really what it's about. Um, but let's just say you go in the army and you know get VA disability because the army hurts you and you can no longer do certain things. You get paid for the rest of your life, right? And it gives you the freedom to do things you want to do instead of things you have to do. Even if you don't get any payments, even if you get all, you know, let's say you get, you know, hurt your back, hurt your leg, hurt your knee, twist something in your neck, whatever it may be, let's say you do all of those things, right? 
even if you don't get compensation for it from the VA, you can you still get it service connected because it happened because of or during your time in the service, right? And then if it, if anything ever happens because of those things, well, it's service connected, so the VA will cover those medical expenses and those medical things that happened because of those illnesses, right? Let's say you hurt your neck in the army, but you know it, nothing happens now. You get out, you get it service connected, right? And then 50 years from now, when you're an old man, you're having horrible neck pain. Well, it's probably because of your time in the army and the VA will cover those medical expenses and help you out with your recovery because you're service connected, right? So you have that access to that for the rest of your life. Now, if you get, I don't know the specifics, but I think it's 30%, it might be 10%. If you get a very slow rating because of legitimate issues, right? Now you're in the VA system and you have pretty much comprehensive medical care for the rest of your life. And medical care is, as you know, a huge expense for people in the civilian world. And now you have access to that because you did your time and people love to be like, oh, you didn't earn that. You know, you only did four years. You didn't deploy to combat. But I take great, um, I have a lot of respect for people that do it and people that are still in and continuing to serve. And I thank them so much. But I truly believe you, you sign up. It's so cheesy, but you sign up one for hard times, right? You sign up for what's that saying? You sign up, the price for signing up in the military is everything up to and including your life, right? Now, the likelihood of that happening is very slim, but you do sign up to do that if the need occurs, right, to die for your country. But I appreciate all the struggles and hardships that doesn't really get talked about that service members go through every day, being away from family for nine months to a year, living in less than ideal living conditions, having the stress of the work and the weight of the world on your shoulders in the military, being in the field all the time, like things that you don't have to do, but that need to be done for our country to function and be able to be the country we are today, right? I know it all is kind of cheesy, but it's legitimate and it's real. And I respect the heck out of people that do that. And because of that, you deserve access to medical care. If you, you know, truly are injured and stuff like that, you deserve to be taken care of. You deserve free college because you put four years of your life away. You don't get it back. You gain a lot because of those four years, but you don't get those four years of your life back. And I believe you deserve the benefits that are due to you because of the four years that you did. So you have access to that for life if you get service connected. And I believe you should strongly pursue that. All legitimate reasons people, you know, sometimes get a bad rap for abusing the VA and trying to do scams on the VA and stuff. I'm talking about legitimate issues. If you have legitimate issues, you deserve the compensation and the medical care that accompanies those disabilities. So if you're a veteran right now, I appreciate you. Thank you for your service. If you're still in, thank you for your service. You being in allows me to do what I want to do. Uh, so I really appreciate you. And uh, if you are thinking about joining the military or are going to join the military after high school or sometime soon, thank you for your you know future service. I appreciate you know you having the will to, to fight the good fight. And uh, if I can help you out in any way, just let me know. I'm excited to get back on YouTube and get after it. I'm going to be working on, you know, i got a good new mic here. Uh, it's going to take time to work things out. Let me know how it sounds. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you out. Uh, leave your comments down below. Like the video. Make sure to subscribe. Hit me up on my social medias in the description below. If I can help you out anyway, I always will. I love you guys. Thank you if you're watching this video and you're an OG subscriber. I really appreciate you, man. I love you. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you soon, all right? Appreciate it.